Hey adventurers, welcome to another episode of In Skyrim. Okay. Yes. Are you always an orchid spider? Of course. But Till like to say when I came out of the womb I looked like a spider, all knees and elbows. I was a gangly child. My arms and legs seemed in a hurry to grow and left the rest of my body behind. It didn't help that I was shy. The village children were merciless. Tickery the awkward, they used to chant, like it was some nursery rhyme. Children can be cruel. Yes, but there was one child in particular, Yorn, who took things a step further. He used to climb on the rooftops and hurl stones at me. When I complained to the adults, they almost did the same. Yorn was a sweet, innocent boy, they said. No one believed you? Not even my sister came to my defense. Only one person ever did. Her name was Salim. She was slick, clever, mischievous and mysterious. Her family hailed from elsewhere, and she smelled of sand and blood. When Yorn first met her, I think his jaw would have hit the floor if she hadn't thrust it up his nose. She didn't buy his sweet boy act for a second. You and Selene must have been fast friends. We spent every minute together. Her father was grooming her to be a warrior, and she'd often share the lessons she learned. We met at night and practiced by the lighthouse fire. She taught me how to hold the weapon, how to strike with it, and how to defend. Why do you think she taught me? If I learned to protect myself, she said, bullies like Yorn could never get away with hurting me again. But if I wanted to get better, I needed to spar. And to spar, I first needed a weapon of my own. So one night I borrowed a blade from the smith's workbench. I was running up the lighthouse steps to show Celine when I slipped on a patch of ice. Uh... It slid out of my hand, off the ledge, and into the bed of snow below. Celine told me not to panic, even though I was already starting to. We ran down to the shoreline and combed the area. From down below, the fire from the lighthouse was dim, but bright enough to reflect any stray metal lying in that pillow of white. Managed to find it? Yes. In fact, it only took me a few minutes to find the sword standing straight up in the snow. I called to Celine, but she didn't answer. She was staring at something. A dark surface wedged in the rock. I ran over and tugged at her shoulder, holding up the hilt to her eyes. She never turned her gaze. And that's when I looked at the rock once more and saw the door. A black one, painted with skulls and bones. And it spoke. I was mortified. I couldn't even breathe. I backed up, tripped, and fell on my bottom, clutching my blade like a doll. Celine didn't flinch. It... it asked her a question. Celine talked back to it, but the door didn't like her answers. Then she repeated the question to me. What was life's greatest illusion? For some reason, my thoughts turned to yarn. I said something. I can't recall what. But the door opened and... She went in. You didn't stop her? Celine used to say that someday I'd surpass her as a fighter. That I fought so awkwardly my movements were unpredictable. But that night, at that moment, I wasn't that person I was going to be. I was who I was. And that person was weak. Mentally, physically, and emotionally. Celine told me to wait outside. And I was more than happy to. So what happened to Selene change you? Selene used to love watching the guards spar. Her dream was to one day join them, to become a house carl and serve as the Jarl's right hand. She was always thinking about others, trying to shield us all from harm. She was strong, gallant, and honorable. She was my friend. And it burns me every single day that I couldn't be the same for her. Blame yourself for what happened to her? Yes, I blame myself, and I always will, not for opening that door, 
but for lacking the courage to follow her inside it. So I swore to myself that I would become the person Salin always thought I could be and achieve the goals she always wanted for herself. My body is the vessel for both our spirits, one chasing a dream and the other vowing to never let a friend chase it alone. No right. Goodbye. Let me know if you want anything. I think I got a clean mug around here somewhere. Should be a new thing here. Ah, colorful. Any news or rumors floating there? Here, take a look at this for details. Orphan's tear. Until next time. Trace salvaging, shipwreck, still property. Taking it is tantamount to theft. Do you wish to hear about some of the other denizens of the Underdark? Sure, why not? There are the Illithids. Some call them Mind Flayers. They have an empire as great as the drow. Negotiation is difficult because of their psionics. Their eyes are blank, unthinking. They have four tentacles that dangle and twitch over a lamprey's mouth. Their main goal is dominance over others. They delight in casting a spell on you to paralyze your body, <laughs> then cracking open your skull and drinking everything inside it. There is also the Kuatoa, a race of fishmen, cold, horrid creatures, driven underground ages ago. The first sign of them is the reek of dead fish. I wouldn't want to say those creatures. Thanks to the pathways closing, in this plane, it is unlikely. Alright. <clears throat> we have a quest. to eradicate enemy engaged. Let the killing commence. Darkness takes. In the name of Queen Recorder, off with your head. Ah, I missed the jump. Die by my hand. Hey, if it makes you feel better, you die to it. <laughs> okay, this. never mind. This is just a lose-lose for you. These bandits have no idea what they're in for. Okay. Well, they're dead now. Back to the wind break in.
Come on in. Just stoked the fire. Take a seat and get the cold out. Yeah, that dagger was as fresh as codling. Forged maybe three weeks before we left dock and not a sign of rust. That's an amazing story, Frick. But it's not verifiable without some sort of written proof. Maybe if you had the dagger in question. But I appreciate the tale nonetheless. If I ever want to hear more stories of the open sea, then you'll be the first person I ask. As you wish. Ah, well met, Traveler. Is there something I can help you with? Said about. Oh, that. Frick was trying to sell me another of his tall tales. I told him the facts don't support his story. It is really just another way of saying I don't believe him. <laughs> but I am extremely interested in sailor folklore. That's what I've come to Dawnstar to study. Perhaps you can help me with this journal I found. Well, this is an interesting find you have here. Very, very interesting. You may not know this, but for years Wanderer's Rest has been a map maker's joke. That's because it doesn't exist. You see, there's a stone road that goes west past Pine Frost Tower and snakes into the mountains. But it runs straight into a dead end. Legend has it that the High King, when looking at the map, demanded to know where the road went. The map maker, of course, told the High King the road didn't go anywhere. But the King insisted the map maker was wrong. After all, there were taxes being used to fund the upkeep of these roads, and jobs that demanded on that upkeep. There had to be a reason for it all. Um. The road had to lead somewhere, so the map maker took his quill and made a dot on the map. That place was called Wanderer's <laughs> Rest. In other words, one's final resting place. Because chances were, anyone who walked that road was never coming back. The journal's significant. Well, there's actually two legends regarding Wanderer's Rest. It just so happens that the one about the map maker is more popular. Probably because it's the more interesting story of the two. The other legend tells of an old tomb where an ancient brotherhood buried their dead. So the journal corroborates that theory? Yes, it can't possibly be a coincidence. And I've always suspected this theory to be more viable than the first. The tale of the map maker and the High King, <laughs> that sounds more like political commentary. A story fashioned by a jester of low birth. But this other theory, it not only gives a reason why the road was built, but a reason for the name. When a member of this order dies, he seeks passage to his final resting place, and only then will the way open. Uh, what else do you know about Wanderer's Rest? Well, truth is, the legend of Wanderer's Rest isn't something you'll find in any textbook. I only know of it because a friend of mine told me the stories, poems really, of warriors without form. But if you could somehow enter the tomb and find tangible evidence of its existence, that would be worth something. Your friend ever mentioned how to enter the tomb? He said the way will open for a brother and a pilgrim, but I would find him and ask him yourself. 
The problem is, uh, he's a bit of a lout. And the other day, the Jarl's men came by and put a bounty <laughs> on his head. I suggest you hurry to Winterhold, lest the bounty hunters find him first. As for me, I need to attend to some business in High Rock. But I will return to Skyrim in a fortnight. Hopefully with payment for services rendered. For now, I wish you good luck. This is an exciting discovery, and I pray to Julianos it will be a satisfying one. Okay. No dragon can withstand the fire of the Red Mountain. Okay. As you will. Speak with Tipu. Bone break fever to this? <laughs> Somebody said you had bone break fever. I know my back is a little bit crooked, but it's as strong as an ox. Ah, uh, out for some fresh air, I take it? Aye, fresh air and exercise. You know how it is, neither of us can stay cooped up for long. Did you find any work at the inn? Supposedly there's a man in Winterhold who knows how to find an ancient tomb. Sounds like an adventure. And if that's the case, I ought to come with you. It's almost like I can hear Salin's voice in my head telling me to stop wasting time with small bounties. So if you're headed to Winterhold, then I'm right behind you. Be honored to have you. You'd be the first. Most people don't show me that kind of respect, so I... I'm thankful for your words. Old man with... no armor. Okay, why the hell are you wearing that, Jordan? Right, um, Winterhold. Born in Winterhold. Good lord, didn't anybody hear subscribe?